All right, welcome back. I have Michael Ogurami joining me right now. Hello, Michael, and welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning, Nancy. Thanks for having me. Now, let's talk about the inflation data uh, that we broke the news here on Friday 11, just before uh, 12, uh, the Statistician General announced headline inflation 16.63. I know I did ask you about your perspectives on that data, but how do you think that Nigerians have, uh, you know, have a sense of that data? Do you think that Nigerians really understand the sense of that data that was released? Um, so to be very honest, I think that this is where um, more orientation from the um, NBS would come to play. I like the fact that the statistician general would normally, you know, have a press briefing. But I really would think that, you know, you know, this press briefing, you know, should more like you know, be, be more televised so that people can really understand how the figures you know, really affect them. Because when you tell a layman on the streets that inflation is 16.63 percent, they really can make more sense of it because prices are still very, very high. You understand? So, um, so I think this is where you know. Um, the NBS coming out to, you know, orientate more Nigerians about inflation figures. You know, this is where I think it will, it will come in more handy. Now, if we take a look at it, that inflation numbers across the, the spectrum of it, uh, headline inflation, core inflation, food inflation, and all of that, you know, we, we are still in a high inflationary environment. How would you just oppose it, growth and inflation, because... Uh, GDP growth are for the last quarter as released by NBS, 5%, 5.01%. So is it more comfortable to have growth and inflation or is it uncomfortable or how uncomfortable is it for us to have a high unemployment rate, which is at 33.3%. If you also add underemployment, is higher, close to 50%. So how uncomfortable is it to have high unemployment rate and inflation? I hope you understand what I've asked. Yes, yes, Nancy, I understand your question perfectly. Um, so the thing is, um, well, if you look at, you know, the, the evolution of, you know, GDP growth, you know, from since the beginning of the year, you know, 0.51% in the first quarter, 5.01% in the second quarter. You notice um, inflation as well. You know, there was, you know, a reinflation in the first three months of the year, January, February, March, by April, you know, we began to see the disinflation, you know, and that has continued to now. And I really think that, yes, growth really falls, you know, you know, into you know, the disinflation trend that we've seen so far. Quite right, you know, unemployment, you know, still remains very, very high. Um, but then again, you have to understand that, you know, unemployment is not just simply, you know, influenced by, by growth and, and production activities alone. There are a whole lot of factors you know, that determines you know, where unemployment is. So, but I would say in terms of the nexus between growth and, and, and inflation, I think that the fact that the economy has been recovering has sort of you know, linked support, you know, to this inflation that we've seen, you know, since April, from April, you know, down to now. About the, the, okay, let me put it this way. Should we encourage more growth at the expense of high inflation? Because even though our inflation is going downwards, if our inflation is even at 10 percent, Michael, why are you smiling? <laughs> Let me get what's on your mind first before I continue. <laughs> so, so Nancy, the truth is, I think that when it comes to putting out a scale of preference for macroeconomic objectives, I really do think you know growth is really important. I mean, once the economy is growing, it filters into you know almost every single macroeconomic objective we're trying to achieve: full employment, achieve stability, and all of that. So I'd say that more attention, you know, I feel in my opinion, should be placed on growth. If the economy is growing at a very fast pace, what you would see is, you know, some sort of improvement in the level of employment and some sort of improvement, you know, in inflation. And I think that is what the CBN has been trying to do because if the CBN had been super concerned about inflation, you know, um, uh, if, if the CBN had been so more concerned about you know, inflation, you know, and the fact that the, you know they want to, you know, they want to hike rates, they prob probably would have, you know, changed their course, you know, since. But you notice that they continue to maintain the monetary policy rate at 11.75 percent, and that is because they want to engender more growth. So I would say, I mean, I think I think um, growth should should be the, the main concern for now. So if you if you're so concerned about growth that we should 
uh, the macroeconomic statistic we should focus on should be that of growth. At what level do you think will be comfortable growth for us? I know we have a 5.01% growth, but that is due to base effect, and that is also due to activities climbed as a result of we all came out of a lockdown, businesses reopened, and all of that. Not necessarily that we really, uh, you know, use the magic wand and things just uh, uh, it became uhuru. At what growth statistic is actually comfortable for us as an economy, bearing in mind that we're 206 million people, a lot of us are unemployed, many of us are underemployed. Yes, um, the thing is, it's, it's difficult to, um, um, to put a number to it, you know, unless some sort of, you know, um, modeling, you know, um, is done. But I, I, would, I would make a guess, you know, by simply saying that, I mean, if you take out the base effects, I think that if, if we can print, you know, a growth rate similar to what we had, you know, in the, in the last quarter, 5%, if we can maintain it, you know, over, you know, steadily over, you know, let's say four or five consecutive quarters. I think it's, it would be a very good one you know, for the economy. Um, you know, historically, um, our growth rate has not, never pledged double digits. And that is because, you know, of the structural constraints we have in the economy. You know, but what you've seen, what we've seen historically is that, you know, there are periods when we had, you know, 6% growth rates, 2014, 6% growth rates, and we were able to maintain this, you know, you know, you know, within this range you know, for, for, for a couple of quarters, and that sort of helped, you know, the economy to grow. So if we can you know, get a repeat of, you know, the 5%, between 5 and 6% over the next, you know, four or five quarters steadily, I think it's going to be a good one for the economy. Mm. Michael, let, let's take a look at uh, this issue, which is perhaps inflation and wage or salary pressure. Uh, because inflation is high, we are not seeing income or even wages or salary increase the way inflation has increased. How do you think that Nigerians should be able, how can the suffering of Nigerians be ameliorated with this price pressure? Vis-a-vis, -vis, wages are not increasing, incomes are not increasing, salaries are not increasing, minimum wage is still at 30,000 Naira. How much is 30,000 Naira FX? If you change that <laughs> to, to dollars. You know, when I did the analysis, I think last year, a hundred dollars was about uh, thirty-six thousand naira. But now I don't even have an idea. It's around four fifteen at NAFEX rate. So, just do the math. How can this price pressure be ameliorated when people are not getting commensurate increase in salaries and wages? When you think about it, Nancy, it's, uh, I'd say it's, it's, it's rather disappointing that, you know, we don't have a system of wage, um, inflation indexed wage, you know, in Nigeria. You know, in, in advanced economy, you know, what you see is you have a lot of companies operating um, in inflation index wage such that you know, whenever the um, inflation, in fact, in some, in some very great countries, you know, they, they anticipate inflation and the anticipation of that inflation then builds into you know, people's salary. So people sort of get a higher salary ahead of, you know, um, inflation actually taking place. You know, but we really don't have that system in, in Nigeria. And that is one because of the fact that, um, you know, most of the companies and businesses you have in Nigeria are, are barely trying to survive. So if they have to, you know, trade that part, it's going to be very, very expensive for them. But what do I think Nigerians can do well, in situations like this when the real purchasing power of income, you know, is, is low? You know, there are two ways to it. Number one is either um, Nigerians, you know, look for um, cuts down their costs. You know, that's the only way. Look for cheaper alternatives. You know, in terms of you know what they consume, you know, look for cheaper alternatives. The, the goal would then be, you know, ensuring that there is some sort of, you know. Um, Survival, that's the, that would be the grand thing, you know, survival, you know, instead of, you know, um, um, luxury. The other strategy would be, you know, for uh, Nigerians to look for ways to get variable wage, that's wage, you know, that can, you know, sort of, you know, move in tandem with the level of inflation. Beyond these two means, I'm not really so sure, you know, how, you know, Nigerians will probably be able to navigate the inflation mm. currency. 
you know, it's, <laughs> I understand what you're saying because even companies are reeling from the effects, let alone increasing salaries at the same time, you know, but anyway, I don't want to go into that. Perhaps inflation and wage growth or salary growth or inflation and the relationship with salary should be a different show enti entirely. But is there an easy solution, uh, you know, in solving this inflationary pressure as well as the FX pressure that we've been seeing in the last few uh, weeks and perhaps months? Is there an easy way out? That's the A part of the question. The B part of the question is the accommodative stance of the CBN, which we've seen at least in the last one year or so, or going to two years. How do you think that, will that continue since inflation is moderating now? Yes, I think I think it will continue till the end of the year, um, based on the body language and the signals that the CBN, you know, has passed to, you know, the markets in the past, in the last NPC you know, that we've had. I, I think that you know, 2021 is still going to end off, you know, with the accommodative policies. Uh, we'll most likely have parcel of some of this um, um, accommodation, you know, let's say early 2022, but I don't think. You know, we would see any reversal in 2021. Uh, and then, you know, when you then, you know, consider um, what exactly can the government do? The truth is, yes, the CBN and the government has intervened in the market, but um, frankly speaking, there is still a, you know, a, a, a huge you know, financing gap as far as real sector intervention is concerned. When you consider the you know, economic impacts of COVID of the economy, it is enormous. And, what the CBN, you know, has, has used in terms of financing to sort of shock the gap, you know, in the economy is is laudable. But frankly speaking, there is still, you know, the, the, the economy requires more because for every one piece, for every one naira loss that is um, induced by COVID, the impact is multiplied on the economy. So if the CBN is intervening with uh, with one naira, it's not going to solve the problem, you know. So 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 it, it begs the question of you know more real real sector uh, intervention in, in terms of funding. But I'm not so sure if the CBN you know, has the funding in the firepower to sort of meet all of that. Okay, thank you very much, Michael, for your thoughts this morning. I wish you a great week ahead. Thank you very much, Nancy. All right, I've been speaking with Michael Ogureme, a macroeconomist and a fixed income analyst, the Chapel Hill.